This is a very special edition podcast that I'm running along with my normal weekly podcast. And it, this comes at a time when I'm beefing up. I mean, I, I'm currently doing a Jordan Peterson series, so I've got podcasts coming every single day. So I'm doing this at a very congested time. And normally you'd say, don't do too many podcasts at once, but this is important. I'm launching my life coaching. This is, this is beta. This is beginning. I'm making this available and I'm in the early stages of marketing this to people. Avenue Guru is a brand that I've had. You can go to avenueguru.one, not avenueguru.com, avenueguru.one. And if you're watching the video rather than the podcast, you can see the logo behind me because I'm, I'm showing you what this is. I had this idea long ago that, you know, those motivational posters, uh, Despair Inc., came out before the dot-coms. They had a magazine everybody got, and then it became despair.com. And they had these demotivators because that motivational genre had grown to a point of irritation. The, the motivational posters, you know, the black paper or black poster, and then it has this picture, and it's got a primary, like there's a main color, not primary color, but main color, and it's a big word with that color, and then they got a little saying underneath it. This came at a time when computer aided graphic design maybe was just coming into being, but there was still a lot of work to do. I think that that, that style of motivational poster actually came while Photoshop and the like graphics, graphic design software was taking over. And the way to do graphic design up until that point really included being an artist with the paper on your desk. And the idea of those posters was to try to help people that wanted to have better lives to give them some inspiration to keep focused. That was the idea. Well, you get someone that wants to be a manager or wants to have a better life and he get he's addicted to self-improvement. The problem is he would presume that other people also want to be addicted to self-improvement and he'd take his self-improvement posters, which were meant for home and go take them to the office and start beating other people over the head with all these self-improvement posters. And it eventually became this passive aggressive thing, a negative vibe. Those posters are great if you're getting it for yourself, not for others. You don't, you don't give other people motivation that that's called pressure. Uh, all right. Well, this had created a negative vibe so that the motivational poster genre was so easy to create in GIMP and Photoshop and, and any, you know, photo editor. So, so easy. So that became a thing to sarcastically describe certain ideas. All right. Well, I decided that, that the concept, I mean, I, I wanted to drive myself to learn certain ideas, certain words to give myself uh, reminders. So I took text, superimposed it on a picture, did what's called a clipping mask. So it's like the words cut out a piece of the picture and there's a solid color in the background. So I'm rather than having black background here, picture there, colored word over here, text below describing it. I just made the color, the background and I made it. So the picture was the word. Now I want to be original. So I did not use a font. I tried using impact. Impact is an old bold face font. I think from the early 1900s, people probably don't know this, uh, universe bold condensed is a similar one. I, I kind of liked it, but I made my own. I designed my own letters. I made my own letters and that's, that's not a font. If you go to avenueguru.one, that is not a font. Those are my letters that I designed. So that was my idea. And I didn't, I didn't want a word explanation. I thought if I'm going to have words explaining this, this single word poster thing, I'm going to have the words in another place. Like I, I want to have, well, like the words that explain it over here, kind of a black and white colorified, whatever background, same picture with the words elaborating on it, like in this room. And then I'm going to have the colored poster over in that room. 
and now I'm real. I'm taking the poster, put it in two places. And I'm really reinforcing an idea for myself. Okay, all right. That was the poster concept. Well, at the same time, I mean, I, I've been doing informal life coaching all my life since before life coaching was a thing, and I, I just didn't know it. I, I didn't have a system. I would just do it, and. I, I mean, right now, at the time of making this video, I'm discovering that I really need to focus on life coaching as my J-O-B, where I exchange time for money. And the reason I can do that isn't because I've had financial success at any of my failing profits, not uh, projects, not profit. I have this vast number of failing projects that I keep afloat. I say failing, they're actually not failing. They're very little. I've got a, a T brand, Jesse Young. It's about six or seven years old. It's still in business. It's financially solvent. And it's not growing. But it's still around. It's still there. Many businesses fail after five years. I've got a business that doesn't. It, now, that, that's an accomplishment. And it's not costing me money to keep it going. That, okay, so, like, you know, there's something to say about that. To know how to create something that's so scalable. I mean, it, it's scaled down to a microscopic, rather than failing, it's scaled down to a microscopic business. I mean, you know, you know the thing about doubling a penny every day for 30 days and you get a million dollars. And you know how bacteria grows. You know the picture of the bacteria splitting and splitting again and splitting again? Bacteria doesn't just do that everywhere. There's got to be sugar. If there's no sugar, they can't do that or something that they eat. Maybe it's bacteria that eats pollution. There's bacteria that eats crude oil. When there's a massive oil spill, all the oil out in the ocean gets eaten by bacteria that, that eats the oil. It just that, like that's a, that's a thing. That, that happened uh, with the offshore drilling thing uh, down around near Florida during the Obama years all this, there's this, all this oil and it all disappeared. And everyone wondered where it went. Well, that's where it went. Okay. Bacteria. I know how to scale my business ideas so that they can become microscopic. A lot of people start a brick and mortar business and, and they don't know how to scale it down. Even then, when it comes to a website, they'll hire a, they'll, they get a marketer. They pay two, three, four hundred dollars for web design, logo design, all this investments. Well, I do all that on my own. I, in fact, I've got a video on how to use a graphic design software. I've also got a video on how to get the WordPress website going as if that's not enough. And frankly, I think everyone should have a personal little web server anyway. I write software for those. I, I, I charge $20 a month for it. I know how to take you know, a, a concept and make it scalable down so it can become so small that it's microscopic, but it can become infinitely huge. That, that's important because if the economy goes down, you don't want your businesses to go bankrupt. You want them to go microscopic because then they're still alive. All right. So that's what I've got. That's what I do. All right. But I still don't have at this time in my life, I still don't have any massive success financially with those things. So as I'm feeling... And it's, I'm sharing with you what, what should go on in the soul searching, mission searching, life coaching type of thing. Like, like I say, life coaching, Avenue Guru is a life coaching brand. That, that's what it is. I've got a book that's already been written. Uh, I'm going to revise it because I don't think I can publish a book about life coaching until I've been doing it. But I've got a book that's already drafted. Um, I'm probably going to go back and double the amount of content in the book, probably for sure. I'm, I'm going to do a spot to describe. Well, I'll, okay, I'll tell you what's in the book. It's uh, basically it's perspectives on life. I'm going to be making a little video. Search around on my YouTube channel and you'll find the video where I describe what those perspectives. But I have like these, these ideas. It's, it's like um, one of them, uh, it's not going to be in the video. Okay, I won't double my content. You know, you, I won't duplicate the mode. I call it a mode. And it's, it's when we get into 
kind of an, our, our, our mammal instincts where humans are from kingdom animalia and we have auto instincts that take over. One mode uh, could be mother bear mode where mom stops thinking and starts acting like an idiot because she thinks that that's going to protect her children. Um, parent, dads can do that also, but it's okay. But maybe dads would do other things. Uh, dad, dads might get into uh, caveman protector mode more or less. But then that's that's not the general rule. That's a thing. This is part of uh, the Avenue Guru. Is that you don't have rules on how everybody behaves. You have rules on how people might typically behave. But then you're always going to have the surprise. One, one, one thing that I've recently been going through in my life, like two days ago, in fact, yesterday, yesterday, that as we go through life and have our expectations, we have our plans of how we think things will happen, life throws us a surprise. And we don't know how to adapt. We, we just, it's like, okay, I've accepted that this is how life's going to be. And I'm just going to plan my life and arrange my furniture so that this is always going to keep happening. And then a change comes down the pike and we don't know what to do. We miss it. And then someone else catches the change and they make all the money and we missed it. We saw it coming, but we didn't know what to do. Now, sometimes the issue is being able to forgive people. You've got some tard in your life. You argue with them for months about doing like what nobody would dare to say shouldn't be done. You know, don't burn your neighbor's lawn. Don't start your neighbor's grass on fire. You know, and like what? Who would do that? Like that Maybe not that thing, but that level of a no-brainer. It could, it could be starting your neighbor's grass on fire. No, it's healthy for your grass. Like, you might have that. And it might be difficult to make an arson charge because it'd probably be an insanity plea. And it's like, yeah, but now my lawn's... But my house is... Your house is fine. It was fine. See, I put water around. It's fine. But it's my lawn. You don't... You know, like... We have things in life, people that argue with us about stupid things like this constantly. And so finally you accept, okay, my neighbor's crazy. My neighbor's going to try to set my lawn on fire. M you know, my, you know, so to you know, in, in my little illustration here. And you plan your life expecting crazy people to be crazy. But then all of a sudden the crazy person stops. They change, they apologize, they come back. And we miss it. That's, that's, that's hard. Ha that's hard. That's hard to figure out. Most of us either plan our lives and we live by healthy habits, so to speak, or we're like antisocial, you know, whatever's that, you know, we're like antisocials who don't know what we're going to do five minutes from now and don't know what we ate for breakfast. I, you know, and those people can roll with the punches all the time because they don't have a plan. Being able to do both, that's not easy. That's really hard. Okay, so I gave you two examples of, of what's, what's, you know, in the book Avenue Guru. Talks about these things. All right. So I'm, I'm launching this Avenue Guru thing. And I've got a book that's going to talk about these things. But what in the world qualifies me? I mean, why should I sit down with you and talk about these things with you. The reason is because I survived Taiwan. I, it's occur Why is this not irresponsible for me to try to be advising other people in their lives? I don't think people get how incredibly difficult it is to survive in Taiwan's third world legal system. But I did. I've walked the floors of the factories in Vietnam. I know how that works. I've seen how they're different from the Taiwanese factories. Um, I've, I've seen uh, stuff that I, I don't like, but if I tried to fix it, it'd make it worse. 
You know, I mean, I, I, I've seen real life over here. I've, I've known that I have to bring papers from America. And then when a country, a, a, you know, a, an employer was trying to steal my papers, my identity papers, and the government was actively allowing them to do it. I knew how to outsmart that and survive the first time around. Um, and I've, and I've, I've done it 10 years. See, when you grow up in a third world legal system, you just know how it works. Uh, you know, a, a kid that grows up in the ghetto with, with gangs all over the place, he knows how to act. He knows how to behave. So he doesn't irritate, you know, the gang leaders. He knows what's safe and what's not. If you're an outsider, you don't know and you'll step in it. Well, I was the outsider and I survived. That, that does stuff to you. So I'm going to wrap up for today and I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk more about life coach, specifically what I'm going to be offering in life coaching. And I'm going to be explaining that later.